This is the city of Brela. I live here. This is how it used to look in the 90s. The early 90s. It kinda sucked. It kinda still does. Today I'm gonna tell you a story about my first computer, but before I do that I have to tell you about how I got it. And why I got it. You see, back in the olden days, in the early 90s, we were poor. Most of everybody around here was poor, so people left to work in other places. Some of them managed to work in Western Europe or at least Central Europe. Some of them even in America. But most of the people around here went to work in Ukraine, which is being invaded at the moment, if you're wondering. And my dad was one of those people. He left to work in Ukraine oh, around 1992. This was before I even went to school. He worked there for about three years, somewhere near Krivoy Rog. I think that's how it's pronounced. It was quite far away, I mean, according to Google Maps, driving there, I mean, not now. On a normal day would take you about 11 hours. Back then the roads weren't, you know, so uh, advanced and it would take the better part of a day. And he drove all the way with a, a Dacia 1310, which is the car from Pugakuba. And boy, let me tell you, you do not want that thing to break down in the middle of nowhere in Ukraine in the early 90s. Or Romania in the early 90s. Or Romania now honestly. Or Ukraine now because of the war. But before all that, when it seemed like, you know, we could come together as a community of humans, things were, at least seemed like they could be different. So let's zoom in for a bit. What you're seeing now in the background, this area with like these brown containers, these rusted out containers. This is where my dad lived. I mean, effectively in one of these containers, this is where he lived for three years. I believe this was their mess hall where they ate. And well, this is where they produced building materials, which they then used to effectively construct Dolinska. This neighborhood here, these houses, they were built by my dad and a lot of the people that came over from Romania to work here and from other places in Eastern Europe. The pay wasn't, I mean, great compared to what it would have gotten if it worked in Germany or France or someplace else, but in that period of time, um, not a lot of places would have actually taken Romanians or Polish people. It, I mean, it was, it was a different time. And after he built that thing, he worked on this thing here. This is the um, the pumping system that takes the water from places like this and makes sure it gets to where it needs to without causing any uh, ecological disasters. He told me that at one point uh, during a um, winter, the uh, the water in the pipes froze at some point in this installation, which caused a lot of problems so the solutions that uh, they uh, they had found was to simply get a bunch of tires uh, put them under one of the bigger uh, meter long, meter diameter pipes and just set the tires on fire and that thawed uh, the uh, the pipes enough for the, the pumps to resume functioning which was uh, a unique solution but it's it's a solution that you would use in Romania and Ukraine because it's it's that kind of place and this is where the uh, the houses that uh, they tore down used to be around this area now everybody lives here well as many of the people that are still alive uh, from that time this was 30 years ago uh, they live here he used to talk about going around Dolinska to get to know the place and seeing that there was a locomotive like right in the train station, an old style locomotive planted there as a monument. I think this may actually be it. It's kind of hard to discern from Google Maps and there's there's no uh, any sort of street view in this area at all. It is quite remote. I mean, it's it's not a place that's getting a lot of visitors, I would say, especially not now. This used to be, um, I'm not sure if 
countries outside of this area have this habit, but the, the closest equivalent for Americans, I guess, would be a yard sale, but it, you don't sell things in your, your own yard, you sell them in a bazaar. Everybody would form a, a, like, not even a swap meet, it's, it's, it's a bazaar. You go to a place, you set up a, you know, a, a stand, then you start selling stuff, any kind of stuff. And that used to happen on the weekends near this, the stadium. He actually said that some enterprising folk, you know, people who either worked at some stores or even owned some stores would uh, actually not sell stuff in the store. They would hide it. And then they would take that stuff and sell it here in the bazaar at uh, at more expensive prices than they would have been available for in stores. And uh, after they sold them, they would, you know, put the money in the, the store, you know, uh, as uh, financial evidence that the goods were sold in the store at the price they were listed for in the store. And they would pocket the difference. I mean... It's something that would happen in Romania as well. Um, the early 90s were uh, were a way in were were a time in which everybody tried to find ways to make money, any kind of way to make money. I mean, there were there were different times in a way, or well, maybe not that different. But we just got out of communism. We we suddenly realized that the world is is quite big and. We maybe have the, the chance, the opportunity to own things and buy things and learn things and live and maybe not be treated as uh, cannon fodder or workers until we die and have a life of leisure and maybe have some, have some hope for the future. No, my computer didn't come from here. No, 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 no. That computer came from all the way up here. From Cherkasem, I believe that's how it's pronounced. He only went there once uh, he had to buy some stuff and on the way he found a, a store that sold second-hand goods, you know, used goods, cheaply. And one of the things they were selling were computers, old computers. Well, maybe not that old. In this particular case, the computer was maybe five years old, which is not a lot by today's standards. I mean, if you got now a computer that was five years old, you'd still have a banging good computer. But back then, technology was advancing at a very, very rapid pace. And um, this was Soviet technology. So compared to uh, what other people were using, in 1993 there was a bit of a difference he asked the people in the store for a computer as best he could he did speak a bit of the language and they showed him a computer he said yes that would be a good one he then went to exchange the money that he had for something that would be usable here by the time he got back uh, they had already wrapped the computer and uh, he was off thing was they kind of cheated him a bit uh, he paid forty dollars for that computer which back then was uh, worth something i'm i can't really pinpoint exactly how much it would have been worth since uh, romania was being hit in the face with hyperinflation around that time and it was uh, going up and up and up and up and within like three years uh, that kind of money would be uh, close to meaning nothing I mean the equivalent in lay the the equivalent in dollars well 40 bucks is still a lot of money even today but the, the bit that they cheated him on was uh, that um, that computer was supposed to come with some extra bits you know attachments and stuff and they didn't put those in a box, I believe that their idea was that whoever buys the computer and sees that the other stuff isn't in the box will come back and buy the stuff. But he realized that when he was about 200 kilometers away and there was no way he was going to go back just to get that uh, extra stuff and pay more for it. 
that would have been a bit silly, if you think about it. So sometime in the year 1993, this computer arrived. I have no images of it taken by myself. We had access to a camera sometime after that, but you know, actually getting film, developing it and printing the pictures, that was insanely costly. It was something that was reserved for weddings and you know, special events, not, you know, goofing about. The computer, as you can see, is an Electronica MS, that C is actually an S, 0511. It is better known as the UKNC. It was an educational computer that began production around the year 1987, which is the year that we got stuff like VGA and Excel and a bunch of other stuff that is quite common and in use today. By that point, the fabled Intel 386 processor was already two years old. It would be another two years before it was replaced by the 486. And mind you, the 386 was no slouch. It could run at a brisk 40 megahertz at times, depending on what configuration and what vintage you found it in. Something like a 386, even in 1993, would be still a considerable computer in Romania. Sure, the Pentium just came out, but man, you wouldn't find a Pentium in a second-hand shop in Ukraine, now would you? You actually wouldn't find even a 386. See, this was fairly close after the wall fell and the Iron Curtain was lifted and we were starting to get, you know, a, a sort of hopeful feeling of unity and prosperity and cooperation and not today or yesterday or tomorrow. But that also meant that up until then uh, there wasn't much of an exchange of technology between what was outside of the USSR and the USSR itself. So people had to make do with what they could. In Romania, for example, we built our own ZX Spectrum clones. We had a bunch of them. I absolutely recommend that you read the article written in Ars Technica by Andrada Fiscuteanu about Romanian computers from that era. From the late 80s, they were just copies of ZX Spectrum built in somebody's kitchen. I mean, we did eventually get to build them in actual factories too, but it had to start somewhere. She also wrote an article about Czechoslovakian homebrew games, which is also amazing. But my computer, this Electronica MS-0511, this was not a ZX Spectrum clone. No, 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 nothing that simple, nothing that common. It was, as I've said, I think, an educational computer. One that was built as a copy of the PDP-11. Now, you may wonder, um, how? I mean, isn't the PDP-11 the size of a room? Isn't it a big mainframe? Does it not need, you know, uh, terminals and a central processing unit? And when I say unit, I mean unit, like a big, big thing to which several terminals connect to and they work on the same mainframe. Well, yeah, you would be correct, which is why this computer was both. It was both a mainframe and a terminal. At least it acted like both. It essentially had two processors in it, both running at 8 megahertz. And again, this was when we already had superbly fast Pentium processors. 8 megahertz was still not, nothing to sneeze at. I mean, it, it could still do a lot. There were still Apple IIs around, which in their later versions had at best 4 megahertz. 
this thing had two processors at 8 megahertz. My god, it must have been hella amazing. I must have played some amazing games back then. I could have probably done, you know, all sorts of amazing things with with those, you know, 8 megahertz and 192 kilobytes of RAM. That was even more than a standard Apple IIc C Plus had. And that thing was released a year later than this thing. My first computer was a goddamn beast of a machine. It supported all sorts of stuff like BASIC, Fortran, Pascal, C even. It had a LAN controller. It had support for floppy disks. It had so many things which were not in the box. I was five years old. I had a computer that was entirely in Russian. I was in Romania. It was 1993. I had effectively zero access to any kind of knowledge, any kind of information, any kind of help, anything that would allow me to truly understand its capabilities. I had no idea back then what a PDP-11 was. I barely understood the word processor, let alone how to program one. Now, my brother, he's five years older than me. He learned in school some basic, and we tried to write basic in this thing, but to no avail. We couldn't find any place to write it in any place that actually worked. It had some cartridge slots into which years later I would try to fit uh, an NES, well, a Terminator cartridge which I cut some bits off of. It did not function as I imagined it would. And yet slowly, because thankfully the keyboard had both Latin and Kyrillic characters on it, I was able to discern the meaning, or at least, hopefully, the intention of some of the buttons. Though I have to say that learning to type on this keyboard was uh, perhaps not the greatest thing ever since the Russian format for a keyboard is very different to the Azerty that you may be used to in France or the QWERTY which everybody else uses. I was a horrible typist for a long time because of this computer, because I learned to type on it. And the buttons are all in the wrong places compared to a normal everyday keyboard that we have now. And though I have to say that the keyboard did feel quite fine, it was one of those buckling springs kind of affairs, which was quite clicky, but quite satisfying. My dad also got two monitors. One of them uh, didn't work. He tried to get it fixed and apparently the guy that fixed it didn't do a good job because uh, it never actually worked when we got it. But at least we did get it. There was a huge problem back then that's uh, less of a problem now where the authorities at the border will uh, rob you both on the Ukrainian side, but especially on the Romanian side. Border officers will straight up rob you. We could have had a washing machine 30 years ago, but some border officer did not like that my dad was trying to come into the country with the washing machine, so he didn't let him. But anywho, back to the computer. The monitor that worked was black and white. I had no idea until recently what this thing even looked like in color. I never connected it to a television. My mom never let me out of fear that it would break the television. That's something that parents used to say quite often. Don't connect that thing to the television. It could break it. I mean, that's how magic works, right? What if the evil spirits from the computer go into the television and it explodes? You know, stupid things that you're made to believe when you're a kid for no reason, like religion. I was hoping to actually have that computer in a very, very decayed state for this show. It's why I kept putting it off, hoping that I would find it again. I gave it away to uh, 
to a cousin of mine. He lives in a village. But he left for Italy a long time ago. And the house where the computer was, uh, well, uh, it was left in the care of some people that basically stole and sold everything in there for booze money. So that piece of computing history is gone. It's lost the time. It's junk, probably sitting in a pile of garbage in a landfill somewhere. All I have of it is pictures and the videos that you've been seeing from uh, various other YouTube channels that have access to that computer. But there is one thing I can give you. I can actually give you my experience of using it because there's, there's an emulator of it that you can download right now. I can show you how I used to use this thing. I'm so happy that I found this emulator and I'm very thankful to the people that made it because it, it opened my eyes to truly what I had in my hands and never knew. This is it. That boot time that you just saw, that was how fast it was. I'm not joking. Compared to today's computers, this thing was instant. Now granted, it didn't do much in this whole... Well, this wasn't even the boot menu, actually it was the pre-boot. Well, yeah, it was the boot menu and then you would choose what to boot from. And this is where I spent quite a long time trying to figure out what, what all this meant. And eventually I found out that there is a hidden screen here, which I'm not sure exactly what it did. It did do something, I guess. And it did make the speaker go puck, 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 puck. Anywho, first one, I think it was to load from tape. The second one was to load from a floppy or a hard drive. It had hard drive support. Uh, I think this one was from for network and uh, this one I kind of forgot what it was. It just did this and I'm, I always got stuck here. I don't know what came after this because again, no instructions or anything. So I just reset it by pressing the stop button. But eventually through trial and error, I, um, I did, well actually no, before I show you that thing, there is another menu, there is this menu, and this is where you actually set the, oh, I'm not sure what this is, Sistema Commanda, System Command, I guess you could change from the different type of instructions that, that allowed you, this was the, uh, the screen format, this was the color, you could actually change the color to, to make the background look like something else, so let's, let's actually change it now to pure black. But it, did it change it? I don't think it did. I think it changes it after. Maybe this is the one. No. Did it change it after or before? I think we changed it after. I'm not sure what this thing is. Uh, I found translations of this word uh, meaning something like roll. Maybe, maybe it refers to scrolling because it would be smooth scrolling, I guess. Maybe that's what it is, or maybe it was something to do with a printer. And uh, actually this one, I forgot what it was. But you could change you know, the colors and this did work outside of this menu. And it could also change the, the number of lines that you could be, that, that you would display on screen. Which is, I'm gonna reset it again because I broke it. Uh, see, it reboots so fast, it's just lovely, absolutely lovely. So let's go. There's no escape key in this thing, so let's just go back. Come on, just pick a color. So I'm actually going to turn on the color screen because um, I want you to see what I never was able to actually see. Where is it? Yeah, RGB. This is how it's supposed to look. It's just amazing. This is it trying to connect to the network and there is no network. So let's stop it and it goes into this thing. This is the um, the debug mode. The, the um, It's actually written. Let's actually reset it again because I want to show it to you. It's this. Um, 
uh, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. It was the testing debug or um, um, yeah, I guess it would be the debug mode, which you would enter if you know you access this feature or if you would go to another one of these and uh, it did the thing from before. Let's actually try and change some colors now that we're here. Oh, damn it, I. Let's put the background to green. Did it do it? Yes, it did, and change this one as well. Good. See, it changed the, the selected background. It has to refresh, and it can only refresh this bit because this is the only one in use. The rest of it, that's not in use. That's not being refreshed because that's not in uh, in used memory. That's just there. So let's go into this place. Oh, I'm. Go, I'm, I'm gonna have to change it from the green because it's just unbearable. Let's uh, let's go to the blue again. And this one. See it change of this. And for for years and decades, I had no clue what what these numbers were. They just showed up. Honestly, I'm still not completely sure what these numbers are. They just show up here. There, they exist. I think they may be memory i mean this could be just the memory address and where it where the cursor is now in the memory and if you press r this happens and i'm i'm not sure what this is either if you press a this happens and i don't know what that is either i have no clue you have to understand my madness here i was five years old i i was trying to figure this stuff out and i couldn't I just knew that if I press this button, pardon, actually no, not even here. Here, these don't work. They work in uh, in a different mode. I actually remember that uh, it was. I think my dad actually uh, came home one day. I know for sure this. Then, while he was there, I was messing around with the computer and. When I got to the screen once, I uh, I pressed D, and this happened. It was a screen I'd never seen before. I was really excited, because when I pressed other buttons now, you see this? If I keep this pressed, now it writes in Russian. See, it uses different characters, which was neat, and suddenly I realized, oh my god, I can actually write. Now, I'm pressing backspace, but backspace just does this now. I To delete stuff, I actually have to well, basically do this. Which is move the cursor down. And when, when it's off the screen, it just uh, deletes the text. And it, it can scroll, see? It scrolls smoothly. Well, not in real time. I mean, I, if I give it too many commands, it'll do that forever and uh, lag behind but oh there's that sound I'm actually I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the sound for a bit because it it can get quite annoying but this is where I I spend most of my time on this computer I forgot there's no delete key I'm not even sure how, how I used to delete stuff in this I don't think I ever actually deleted stuff I think I at one point I found that you could just press space and that would erase stuff because there was no no way of deleting <laughs> anything in this. And this is the monkey tail as my aunt would call it. Apostrophes and it had something else. It had um, a different mode that I actually used quite often. I think I mentioned that I used this computer to make games at one point and uh, you can't really make games in this or traditionally traditional kind of games you can make them in this mode you can on this computer but not with what I had available so games for me were basically just me drawing stuff on the screen like game boards and inventing rules that I had to uh, keep in my head or written on a piece of paper and then find people to play the games with so this game had a graphics mode which I think was this button yeah this was the button 
and let you draw stuff like this and I would draw these things like painstakingly draw you know using all these shapes I would draw different maps stuff like continents and islands and all sorts of ships that you could use you know to fight with and you know generally stuff that can't really be uh, well it, it was a game sort of sort of like a board game that I, I I drew on a computer and then had to remember the rules too and communicate it with others this was it this was all that I could do I use these uh, these things as mines by the way in some games so you wouldn't step on a mine Revealed that it was a mine there when somebody stepped on it. It was, it was a different time. It's, uh, not a really great time to talk about mines and war. Different, different time. But this was it. This was all that I knew to do with this computer. Nothing more. Absolutely nothing more for years. I mean, like, I I had this computer for nearly a decade. I I stopped using it at one point. Well. The first time it's because my mom stepped on the, uh, the the video output and just broke it, like sheared it off. And uh, again, I was about seven at the time. Uh, no idea how to use, uh, you know, one of those pistols to glue, not glue it, to, to weld it back together. And uh, eventually somebody did fix it a year later. And then uh, a couple of years later, my mom did the same thing again. Not sure if it was accidental. Probably wasn't, but hey, you know, stuff happens. Um, I never really got past this. And when I, when I when we got the Terminator, I just kind of abandoned this, this computer altogether. And eventually I would, when I got my... my Pentium one, I did uh, give it to my uh, my cousin that I mentioned earlier. There's uh, there's nothing more I could do with it, nothing more I knew how to do with it. But that doesn't mean that this this couldn't be used for something else, because it could. The thing is that this was a fairly powerful computer, and I mean it, it was fairly powerful and. People made games for it. Hell, people are still making games for it. You could go right now to... I can't remember the exact address, something like oldrussiangames.ru and you'll find games made for this thing, which I'm gonna load some of right now. Let's see, go to Conan and I'll go to this. Actually, no, 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 pardon, load state, not save state, that, that would have been really sad. Voila, I have to press run, and we are now in a game, oh, I mean a game where I'm falling, but you know, we get the idea. You play as this character, this Conan guy, and this game was made in 1990. And I'm not really that good at it, and the game doesn't really run that. I mean, jumping is a bit of a handful. But I'm gonna, I'm just gonna set it to grayscale because I think grayscale actually looks better. And I fell on the jellyfish again. Come on. Yeah, oh no, goddamn jellyfish. Reset. Huh. Run the load state. Let's try this again. Run. Come on, yeah, make it, gotta make it. No, 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 it just, this is a difficult game. So let's, let's actually, actually, let's try a different game. Let's load state and go to Arkanoid. Yes, there's Arkanoid. And I just like to want to highlight that, come on, you can run it. Just run it, run. And I reset it again. There was some issue with Arkanoid where it had difficulty running. 
Okay, now it's working. Look at how smoothly those things move. Yeah, okay, you probably think to yourself, that's not smooth, that's a lie, but no, it's actually quite smooth. Look, look, look at the ball especially, look at the movement of the paddle. Look at it. I'm actually going to turn, turn the sound back on. Doesn't seem to have sound in this game, but still. This was made in 1991. Oh, there's a the sound. My dad did buy some floppy disks, the 5 inch variants, but we didn't have any place to put them in. It even has music. Neat. Let's try something else. Let's load state and. Let's see this, not this. Conan, we tried. Goblin. A goblin. This is a load runner. I think I can actually turn the. Uh, Turn the color onto this one. And the sound is absolutely atrocious, so I'm gonna turn off the sound, but this is a fully functional load runner game. See, so do this, you get the treasure, you try to get rid of to escape the uh, the enemies, but look look at the enemies, look look at their sprites, look at the detail on that cowl, that hood. My god, this this computer was a beast look at how good these graphics are I, i'm not joking now i'm not exactly sure when this game was made because again i got these off a forum and there are games made in the year 2019 on that forum for this machine so maybe it's uh like that situation with the uh, the game with the little wizards that's uh made to fit in a really 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 small footprint on the NES and maybe it's something similar but still that is goddamn amazing so I'm gonna load now I'm gonna load some discs actually because this also has disc support it has a lot of support of many things I'm gonna reset it I'm gonna load from disc and yes it does load stuff from the disc if you have a disc which is amazing run yes and we're gonna load into River City, uh, no, River Raid. River Raid is one of the best games I ever played on the Atari knockoff, which my dad also bought, I believe, I think it was a year after this one, after he got this, this computer. Now, I'm not sure if this one actually works that well. I can't remember, honestly, if... Uh, I actually, I've only been playing it for a couple of minutes before I started recording this video. I don't think this is a complete port of it. Uh, it Maybe something that somebody did on that forum recently, because I seem to be able to, you know, uh, go through every place, and I don't think he could do that in River Raid. I specifically remember needing to cross like right through here, and not being able to uh, go off the water. But here you can, so it's not a complete port of the game, but still. I could have been playing River Raid. Well, if somebody had ported it back then on this computer. Hell, I could have ported it to this if I understood what a port was and why it existed and stuff. Still, let's let's load some more games off floppy disks. So, let's see, Adventure. Reset. Come on. Reset. Maybe it doesn't like this floppy disk. And I just said how, how nice it was that it booted up so fast. Reset. Yeah, the, the emulator will sometimes crash, so I'm gonna exit and restart the emulator. Let's load this up again. It should now have the disk in memory, and let's see what it loads. HD cold boot, HD cold... I don't think this is working. Yeah, this... Uh, I didn't check this particular disk before I tried. Let's load up a different disk. So Adventure does not work, Conan. Goblin, I tried. 
this one this I actually played on a different um, a computer uh, one that I uh, had on loan from a neighbor this was highway uh, highway something 57 highway some it's it's the the game where you control a bunch of robots see it's slowly loading the title should show up I, I think now and the thing is it works it works on this ancient machine look at it look at look at the power that this machine had now sure this was made in 2018 but man it could do this. They have information and stuff, lasers. And I could, I could have, well, not this one. So what was the highway? I can't even really. Highway encounter. Highway encounter. That's what it was called. I started was called something else. I'm gonna actually hit demonstration because I uh, can't be bothered to actually play it. But look at it I can actually think I can change the the view and yeah, just changes some colors around that all of them demo mode look at this absolute beauty this is just amazing let's uh, load something else uh, disk this this kind of I had more discs River City Zork Let's look at the Zork. Reset. Let's see what Zork, how Zork looked on this machine. If it even runs, I mean, I don't think I've tested this one. Yeah, that's Zork. I could have had Zork on this. My God. I missed out on so many things just because some, some guys in the store were... Uh, Trying to make an extra buck off my dad. Man. So, <laughs> I don't actually know how to run. Run? Start. Okay. And not just that, there's also the fact that this thing had cartridges. Like, uh, let's see which one was it. Yeah, this one. I believe I could access it through here. Perhaps. And yeah, this is this is basic. Print. What was it? I have to put apostrophe. I think it was apostrophe. Hello go to 10 and then run error at 20 well I guess that makes sense I mean I haven't pro programmed in basic in such a long time that who even remembers but still I imagine if I had the cartridge for basic on this well nah, I did have a uh, another computer after this one that did run basic but we didn't have any sort of storage mediums for it and every program that I wrote on that thing I, I had to write down and then rewrite because there was no way of actually storing things and just let me tell you that spending an hour typing in a game not fun uh, it's kind of depressing I never actually managed to type in a completely fully playable game like small things like uh, like guessing games and hangman and stuff like that that I could do I actually managed to uh, well, retrofit some programs that my brother brought home I mean written from uh, his uh, classes on uh, computer science I I actually 
that's when I started thinking, yeah, maybe that that programming thing that uh, that could be the way to the future. But then, sadly, I uh, I didn't have access to any programming courses like for a long time after that. It was uh, unfortunate, an unfortunate turn of events. Well, if you're interested in getting this thing for yourself, I suggest you do so. It, there's a revision that came out last year. Like it's it's your it's on GitHub. It's made by Nikita Zimin, Felix Lazarev, and Alexei Kisli. Special thanks to our Seni Gordin. So, thank you to those people that they, they <laughs> let me experience something that I could not have uh, in my childhood. Let's actually try print. But I don't have a... Wait, can I reset it? Okay, run. I don't know what that means, actually. Uh, thank you for coming along on this uh, adventure with me through old history, that of this computer and that of my family. I hope that... Oh, if you're watching this, that maybe makes you understand how closely knit and closely related we are in this area of the world. And technically we all are. We all started from the same place. Very, very similar places. I think it goes without saying that war is bad. War is very, very bad. This computer exists the way it is because there was no access to more modern technology around here at that time. This is a PDP-11 clone, a clone of a mainframe that was produced in the in the 70s. This is basically it. That's the level of technology. It's 70s era technology, but still quite potent. I mean, you saw what it did. You saw it run all those. You saw it ra run a load runner, which is something that uh, you know you couldn't really say about uh, a lot of computers from the 70s. So it's it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? To be able to finally use it as it was meant to. I'm going to see you again with more shows. Um, possibly... Oh, it actually has DirectX 9 support. Neat. Uh, possibly on a more... Uh, well, I wouldn't say more... <laughs> regular schedule because uh, it's still going to be two a week at best. Uh, I had a bit of a uh, problem with uh, maintaining the schedule last week or this week uh, due to some other complications from different projects. But hopefully things will not, you know, uh, be affected in the future. Oh, list. Oh, it did, it did remember it. Auto. Twin hello. Let's go to 10. 30. It does so. Oh, it's, it's so nice. How do I reset stuff? I don't know. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, I think it stopped. List. Yeah, it, it still remembers that. It still remembers what I wrote. I think that's the problem. I have to reset it. So, okay, okay, I'm gonna reset it and try again one last time and see if it actually works. What was it? This one or this one? Was it this one? I think it was this one. So print, pardon, then print hello. run and it doesn't do anything because I haven't programmed in basic in so long that I, I don't remember the syntax like at all I used to I used to be able to remember programs in basic that was 30 years ago take care everybody be safe out there and enjoy old technology. Somebody has to.
Goodbye.